You're inside the press box. Christian FM Sports presents Inside the Press Box, where we discuss all sports from our favorite high school team to college and pro. Here's your host, Paul Tipton and Gary Paris. Well, hey, Vero Nation. Thanks for joining us in the press box. It's always good to ju- jump in the press box when we have a win, which is what Vero Beach did last week, 33-18 to 18 over Glades Central. Paul Tipton along with Gary Paris. Gary, I know you didn't really get a chance. To, you didn't see the game live, but I know you probably have watched some of the film on this game and, and certainly have had the download information from, from the boys, for sure. <laughs> um, but... One thing is for sure, we knew that uh, it could go one of two ways. Vero Beach could like really tank because they got a hangover from the Treasure Coast game, or they really bounce back and get back to playing Vero Beach football. And thankfully, the latter happened in that ball game. You know, Paul, you're right because when I watched and looked at it, I tell you, Maurice Smith has been so accurate all year. Mm-hmm. Over 80% of his passes he's been completing. 83. 83%. He starts off, I believe, no completions in 10 or 11 attempts. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I I really want to say this because I really think that Lenny Jankowski may have showed why he is one of the best coaches in high school football in the country. He didn't panic. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. he got to, he got his young he got his quarterback. He settled him down and it was important cuz if they were going to win, Maurice had to have a good game. Yep. And so Lenny did a great job of getting him back into the game. Mm-hmm. Didn't give up on him. Cuz after that he completed like 10 of 11 more or 10 of 11 or 12 passes. After that. Yeah, he finished Several, 11, 11 of 20. Yeah, yeah, and he was down 0 for 10. Yeah. So that just tells you how yeah. accurate he can. He just yeah. got off to a terrible, terrible start. Yeah. And uh, and the way Coach managed him, handled him, mm-hmm. and got him back into a groove. I got to I say that's one of the best coaching jobs I've seen by a coach to get a young man ready to play a game. And I say well, that I would say even just, in, in, in the middle a of a second game. in the middle yeah. of a game, yes. yeah, doing that in the middle of the game, it's so easy to get upset with these guys, these kids, mm-hmm. and yell at them and scream. Lenny just calmed his quarterback down, asked him what he was seeing, probably, mm-hmm. and helped him make the reads. Called some different plays, maybe talked to him again on the sideline, and I, it, it may have been a a changer for this young man for the rest of the season. I think so, Gary. And, you know, the other thing I like about this, and you talk about no panic. All right. Our our air game is not what what we want to see. Something's not right. All right. Let's turn to our ground game. And we did. And, you know, Ferguson and Rodgers, they really stepped up. That offensive line said, all right, let's just roll up our sleeves and get to work and, and work on, you know, get this ground game going. They did. And when you look at the final numbers, I mean, you finish with 155 yards on the ground, 203 yards through the air. That's some balanced offense. And what I love about it is, is like one aspect of the game helps the other aspect of the game. And we talk about this all the time. One can set up the other. And also, sometimes one can help the other. So when one's not functioning correctly, that passing game, the ground game takes over until the passing game can find its rhythm, in which it did. Well, and I tell you, Glade Central is a very athletic team. Mm-hmm. This is a team that's gone into Miami area and played some of the best teams down there to close games this year. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're they're competitive. They they don't lose by a lot of points. Mm-hmm. They they win. They win by a few points. They're, but they're athletic, and they can play with anybody out there. And for us to win the game the, uh, like we did and, and, and really – to turn things around with Maurice and got thank goodness for Quincy and and uh, Reggie oh, because yeah. it was the the lightning thunder opportunities out there on the field mm-hmm. and you said it best this offensive line did a mm-hmm. great job they did protecting and throwing and running giving the running back hose and then again you can't say enough about the coaching staff defense had to step up and play some good ball you know when you play 
when you play Treasure Coast and you you get kind of humiliated a little bit in the second half or you look you got exposed more in the second half than mm-hmm. you than you really would like to have been. Yeah. You learned a lot from that game. And I like what coach did. I think what the coaching staff uh did, they 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 tried to get a little cute on defense at times on that in against Treasure Coast and they saw that it's that doesn't work. <laughs> right, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so they just got to go back and they got to learn how to play blue chip, hard knuckle, gra- you know, you put your fist into the ground yep. and you got to go at it. And uh, if you're on that defensive side of the ball and you got to man up to these guys, we learned that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it took us into this game, I think, the idea that, hey, we're not out. We still, we got a long season ahead of us and we want to play Treasure Coast again. To get that, you may have to wait till the second or third round, but right. there's a good chance if Treasure Coast wins their games, you'll see them again. Yeah. So uh, I just really felt the coaching staffs on both sides did a really good job, and I thought that the uh, the team's defense and offensively probably played some of their best football after a, a tough loss to Treasure Coast. I agree. I agree. And, again, we, we weren't sure, you know, how these kids were going to respond, you know, and, Thankfully, it took a little while, but they actually did. You know, they started to find their rhythm. They found their mojo again, if you will. And uh, we started to see on both sides of the ball, we really started to see uh, these these kids really respond and play back to what we had seen in the early part of the season, which was really good. Um, I love the fact of, you know, our defense, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, we made some adjustments. All right, that didn't work. Let's go back to what we know. We start with our base defense, and, man, did they just really start to rock on Glade Central there. And, you know, Brandon Neely, can't say enough about him when he was doing up front. Chandler Taylor had a really good night. Um, then you start thinking about some of those linebackers. I mean, Cheech Rojas was – or not Cheech, but Bucky was uh, really – really having a phenomenal game. I mean, he was just all over the place, Gary. I mean, it was really good to see him. This kind of a game fits his mo. The yeah. Treasure Coast is tough because yeah. they just play smash mouth football. Yeah. They didn't even throw against us. They yeah. just lined up and played smash mouth, mm-hmm. ran 60 some odd plays and just yep. go eat up the clock and and we're going to walk away with our W. This is a different type of game. You won't see another uh uh Treasure Coast until you play them again. Mm-hmm. So this was a good game for the guys on defense. And I tell you what, Bucky, all years he's just a junior. Yeah, he's learning how to play. Yeah, and uh, he is he is really ferocious out there. Mm-hmm. He just needs a little more meat on the bones, and he, it'd be really devastating. But he he makes up for it with his smartness and his quickness and all. But I want to talk about offense. You know, you always hear about uh, Floyd, Ephraim Floyd, when they talk to him, the college scouts talk to him, and he goes to these camps and stuff, mm-hmm. they they find out, well, his speed's not really that good for a wide receiver. You know, they're looking for 4-4, four, 4-5. Four, four, right. And uh, and he's probably around 4-7 or something of that nature in his speed on a 40. Yeah. But what they don't know, there's a <laughs> thing called time speed and game speed. Yeah. And come game speed, he caught a pass and split. And and I'm going to tell you right now, nobody caught him. Nobody. Nobody. He and, and they're away of, from defenders. Yes, and they've got a lot of fast kids on that mm-hmm. side over there. Yeah. So you tell me that it kind of reminds me, I'm not saying he's a Jerry Rice, but they always said Jerry Rice wasn't his, his speed yeah. of – he was four seven, mm-hmm. four six, four seven speed yeah. when he ran the forty, but he caught everything near him just like this kid does. Yes, and then he has what they call game speed. Yep. And somebody you throw the ball in the seam, and I don't ever remember Jerry Rice getting run down from behind. No, and I don't remember anybody this year running Ethram Floyd down from behind. No, it and, hasn't happened. And I tell you what, this young man's having an all state year. Mm-hmm. He's fantastic out there. He sets the tone. He's a go-to guy. You throw him and Jacobs in there and Smith in there, mm-hmm. and you got yourself a great combination on this uh, on the offense to throwing the ball. I love that with the quarterback and the running game, and oh. it just seems like we're just now kind of getting all the cylinders going. 
Yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, and we talked about this. I mean, especially you you think in terms of like basketball. Basketball, they talk about peaking at the right time. I think this football team is starting to peak. And, uh, you know, we talked about these three games that they had left on the schedule. This is the opportunity for you to get all of your ducks in a row, get your rhythm, get your timing together. And this was game number one, and it looked really good. It was a slow start, but once, man, once they got it in gear, wow, watch out. And you're right. You don't want to peak now. You want to start rising to the tip. Yep. And you want to get into the playoffs, and you wouldn't. When you get into there, you get to that final, you peak. You know what I mean? You want right. you want to get better every week. Yeah. And after the Treasure Coast game, the coach's goals was and let me let me just say this about Lenny Jankowski that I what I know of him. He will start with himself. Mm-hmm. Did I call a good game? Did I prepare our offense for a good game? Then he, he evaluates that. And then he looks down, then he goes to his coaches and says, Did want you guys to be honest with me. What could we have done? Mm-hmm. He's he's a great communicator with his coaches. If he doesn't like certain things, he'll go to you and say, I, I don't think we need to do that anymore. Yeah. I think we need to get away from that. Then he goes over and he probably looks at the defense and looks at what they do mm-hmm. and sets with Robert Leslie and sets down and say, All right, Robert, you you know, I'm reading things they're doing to you now. Yeah. And I can help. This is what we probably need to do. Let me tell you something. Lenny has coached football a long time. Been a head coach a long time. He's got a tremendous success record for a long time. Our whole staff stays together. They, it's a family. You talk about coaches that are a family. That's a family. I oh, mean, yeah. those guys are close. Oh, God, Don't yeah. let anybody come in. They don't, you know, you got to earn your way in. Yeah. And once you earn your way in, you're part of the family. So, well, you and I have been around this program since Lenny's been here. And I can tell you, you and I walk in the room when they're all together and they all kind of look at you like, what are you doing in here? Yeah. <laughs> you know? like, yeah. And I was a, that's and, how close they And are. I was a coach on the JV team. Know, you know, right? they, they, <laughs> what, what are you doing down here, yeah. down here, yeah. old man? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we're, we're like the stepchildren, you know? Uh, <laughs> but it's a great family. Yeah. They're close. And they're open to suggestion. Yeah, oh, there's yeah. they put that they don't wear that pride or they don't. They, no, it's a team effort, coaches and 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 the players. It's a team effort. Oh yeah, I, I like that concept too, Gary. Because I mean, you know, um, just because you're an offensive minded guy doesn't mean you you don't get defense. In fact, you probably get it a whole lot more because what are you trying to do? You're trying to figure out how to break down a defense. Well, especially, right? Espe- yes, and especially with this offense we run, more right. and more teams right. are doing it. Right. So you almost sometimes become predictable on defenses. Right. And that's what coach says. He doesn't. Yeah. He says, "I see some things that you're doing yeah. that are more predictable yeah. than, than you." And, and, and again, those are just coaching. That's what a head yeah. coach. It's his. It's his next out there. He's right. got the well, one sure. that yeah. people are going to not going to say to the uh, offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator. It's the head coach, and uh, but this is a team that again, a coaches. They're a strong brotherhood. Yeah, they are. I mean, they get in there and they can tease each other, but mm-hmm. don't let anybody else say anything to tease them. Yeah. They'll turn on you like you you can't believe. So, Gary, now we got to turn our attention. We talked about there was three games left on the schedule. Now we're down to two, and the next game up is a district game. It's our final district game. It's Fort Pierce Central. Now the Cobras aren't having the best year. Uh, that they probably would have liked to have had. But there's still an opportunity. There's still some signature wins that they could put on the board, and against Vero Beach would definitely be one of them. You're talking about Mike Watkins, who's the head coach, who was uh, an assistant coach at Vero Beach when Lenny uh, brought his his new um, team to this uh, to this area in Vero Beach. So he's familiar with this team. You know, he would love – I mean, first of all, they're all competitors. They all want to win. And then when it's somebody that they've known for a long time, they definitely want to get a win. So, you know, you got to believe Coach Watkins is going to be throwing everything he can at, at the Fighting Indians come Friday night to get a win tonight on Friday night. So this isn't one where you can go, well, you know, they're not playing the way they should be. Blah, blah, blah. you got to be ready to play. Otherwise, well, let they'll, me give they'll, you they'll a, jump a win on you in a hurry. Let me give you a scenario how important a win this is. Okay, Centennial's one and one, mm-hmm. and uh, or one and two, I, I think. Didn't they 
Have they played uh, Central? I mean, they beat Central, didn't they? Yeah, I, yeah, and yeah. And then they lost to Treasure well, Coast. Well, I think Centennial is is one and one. Okay, one and right. one with one game left to play. Correct. And I think that's Treasure Coast. Correct. They're uh, going to play on Friday night. All right, that's Friday yeah. night. All right, Central is O and two and two. Okay, we're one and one. Right. Okay. If Central comes in and beats us, that gives them one and two. Right. If Centennial loses to Treasure Coast, they're one and two. Yep. You got three teams tied. Yes. So that means there'll be a playoff on Monday or the Monday after the last Potentially, game. Potentially. You you mean for the runner up? For the runner up. Well, yeah. we have. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and so this is how important this game is. Is is for you're looking you're fighting for well, a spot of eight right and and the flip side could be true as well I know it'd be a big stretch but if Centennial pulls out a win against Treasure Coast yeah and and, and, and Vero gets a win now you've got three teams that are two and one but yeah exactly <laughs> yeah it would you're right that for the district championship that's, well and that changes a lot for Vero Beach because that gives you optimism to go into the top 4 of that bracket instead of the bottom 4 exactly and that's what I was going to say you're wanting you it's such a must win you lose a lot of points if you yeah. a loss in this game yeah so i i think it's so important that Vero has to come out with the attitude that this is a this is our one game, this is the the championship game for us. More or less, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's the way you got to play mentally with it well, out there. The other side of this, Gary, too. I mean, uh, let's put districts aside for, for just a moment. The overall record still is very, very important when you're talking about the seeding of the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. Because that's where it starts. That's what I, that's what I was getting yeah. to. We couldn't and afford then, to lose. Then you start looking at your RPI. Now, in the case of... Fort Pierce Central, yes, it's a district opponent, but their record being what it is doesn't necessarily give you the points that you need. So really what you just need to do, you need to win the game because that helps your overall record, which is where all of the playoff seating starts with. Well, and you we we would we rather be five fifth seed would be better than, than, than a being, seed being, or being, seventh seed. Correct, because if if we drop right now, based off of, you know, and everything's totally theoretical right now, but based off of what we're seeing, if we were to drop, say, to the seventh seed, more than likely your first round opponent is Treasure Coast. Absolutely. That's what I was trying to get yeah. at back there is that I, we may not, I mean, yeah. we, but that's why it's so important. You want to yeah. win this game, beat yeah. out Jacksonville. Right. You're 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 sitting there then with just two losses. You're seven and two. Mm-hmm. You're most likely then it's you're almost going to f- for guaranteed to be five. Well, let's put it this way, and I don't really want to try to create any type of bulletin board material, and I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. Yeah. But if we're talking about how the playoff brackets work, so the top four seeds are based off of your district champions, but. Those four seeds are based off of your strength of schedule and RPI number. So whoever ends up as the fourth seed is the weaker of the four. Of the four. So if you somehow end up at the fifth seed, you're the strongest of the bottom half of that bracket. Four versus five sounds a whole lot better than any of those other scenarios. Well, and the thing I think, too, you take Treasure Coast, and I th- even though they may end up right now, they're, they're second. Mm-hmm. I still think they're probably the best team in the region right now. Oh, I agree. And uh, yeah. Palm Beach Central hasn't lost a game. Nope. But I don't think they're as strong as Vero Beach or as um, Treasure Coast. I, I, I agree. I definitely, you know, I don't want to necessarily put ourselves too far ahead, but I definitely think Treasure Coast has is, is got to be the best in the region. I mean, you look at all the numbers, and it, it has to suggest. Now, based off of Central's win record – and their RPI numbers, that's what puts them potentially sure. as the number one seed in the playoff bracket. Absolutely. But to Gary's point, that doesn't make them what we feel like is the best team in this region. I think it is Treasure Coast, without well, a doubt. Well, Treasure Coast only lost is to, by one point, Coco. to Coco. Yeah. And Coco yeah. is like in the top ten in the whole state right. of right. Florida. So. And and the wins that Treasure Coast have are yeah. just as impressive as the lone loss that they have. So, All right. Yeah. We got that. We beat that dog to Pretty good of them. <laughs> <laughs> we did. But it's something that we have to think about. I mean, this is part of, 
you know, part of the strategy. Now, does Coach Jay sit there and strategize, you know, win loss? No, no, no. He's looking at potentially, okay, he's got to think about, you know, three games down the road from right now is the first playoff, you know, game. Okay, who would we potentially play? Because you want to start scouting those teams. Well, you want to follow as much as you possibly can. You right. know you got Jacksonville Reigns coming into your team. Right. Home right. territory right. next week, and uh, right. Jacksonville's a good team. Mm-hmm. You can't look past Jacksonville. You can't no. look past Central. No, and you, you you know to be. But as a coach, he they keep their players there one game at a time. Well, they do, and and but you know, but as him, a coach, he's got to start thinking about game planning. Yeah, for whoever the potential opponent could be. Well, I think I got a kick out of you guys talking about the. Um, he ran the um, uh, single wing. <laughs> he did. Against he did. C- yeah. Central. Yeah. And and I think there's two reasons he did that. And my theory is that one, that makes your opponent start thinking about what kind of plays are they going to run? When yeah. will they do that? What yeah. do we do? What kind of adjustment? Mm-hmm. Anything you can do to take somebody out of abnormal. Mm-hmm. The other thing is, is that I think he thinking down the road about treasure. I may be wrong. Yeah. I've not talked to him. Yeah. But the reason you put it in there so that when these offensive line have learned how to do it, yeah, they give them a good look if we play Treasure Coast again yeah. of doing everything they want to for the defense. Look for the defense. But it's not a bad it's not a bad uh what I call big boy uh power football mm-hmm. when you get inside the when you're inside the ten yard line. Yeah, no, it's an interesting theory for sure. So yeah. we'll see. Right now we just gotta think about one opponent and that is Fort Pierce Central, the Cobras. Uh, this is another road game. It's the uh, I won't say it's the final road game for Vero Beach because if they get into the playoffs, they will be on the road. So uh, we'll see how that pans out. But uh, right now, it's about uh, Fort Pierce Central. It's at Lawnwood Stadium. Kickoff will be at seven o'clock. Our coverage will begin with countdown to kickoff at six p.m. We'll have it on the YouTube channel as well. So make sure to let everybody know that uh, you can watch the game there. And as always, go Indians! Thanks for joining us inside the Press Box. For more, go to ChristianFM.com.